I'm going to show you three automation techniques to get your songs to the next level. Let's go. All right, so I have this little loop I made here. It's about four bars long. Uh, and we're going to add three automations to make it into a full and complete beat. Here's the loop itself. The three automations we're going to do are the following. One is going to automate your EQ, one is going to automate the volume of certain tracks, and then one is going to automate the panning. Let's start off with our EQ. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to put an EQ on the master mixer channel and we're going to automate that EQ. So this is our base EQ right here. We're going to change the preset and then we're going to automate from that preset. So we're going to go over here and we're going to left click this presets and then we're going to click 20 hertz and 18 kilohertz. Now we have two knobs here. We're going to automate the movement of this top knob. What we're going to do is we're going to try to replicate dragging this filter knob across. So if we do it manually like this, here's what it's going to look like. So as you could hear, you can hear more of the high frequencies as we move this filter across. So how do we do that? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to this frequency knob and we're going to right click it. This frequency knob determines where that node is on your graph. So if this frequency knob is down, this node is over here. If the frequency knob is all the way at the top, it's all the way at the top. And if this frequency knob is all the way at the bottom, that node is all the way at the bottom. So we're going to make sure it starts at the top and we're going to right click it. Then you click create automation clip. Now you should have an automation clip in your playlist. To add different points on your automation clip, you're going to right click and then you're going to add a point there. So we'll right click right in the beginning. Make sure to put it at about 50% because if you bring it all the way to the bottom, then that cuts off all your sound. So we're going to right click at about four bars. And now we have a kind of a diagonal line that goes across. So here's how that sounds. One thing to remember is that this point here should be pulled all the way to the top or else you're still going to be filtering out some sounds. Awesome. So that's one automation done. Let's move on to the next automation. The next one we're going to do is we're going to be automating volume. The automation of this volume has two steps that we need to do. The first step is to figure out which mixer channels our instruments are on that we want to automate. So we have this acoustic bass right here and that's on mixer 2. We also have the guitar that I recorded and that's on mixer 8. So we're going to do something called rerouting our mixer tracks. Normally, your mixer tracks connect directly to the master, but we can change these and have it route to a different section. So if we look at this one here, this is our base, right? This is currently being routed here, right? So how do we do that? Let's take a different channel as an example. So if we take this one here, we see that it's currently being routed to the master. If we click here, now it's going to be routed to both the master and this channel 11, right? But that's going to make it sound even louder, right? Because we're going to be hearing it from two sections. Because this channel 11 is also routed to the master. So you're basically routing it to the master twice. But what you're going to do to kind of get around that is you're going to go over here and you're going to left click this button here. And now it's going to be unrouted to the master. So it's only routed to channel 11. And then channel 11 is routed to the master. So what that really helps with is now you can take different sounds and route them to the same mixer track. So we have this sound here, which is our guitar. And we're going to route it to mixer 3. Then we also have this sound here, which is our bass, and we're going to route it to mixer 3 as well. Now what we can do is we can automate the volume on mixer 3, and that automates the volume for both the bass and the guitar together. So how do we do that? We're going to right click here, and we're going to click create automation clip. Now we have an automation clip for the volume of the bass and the guitar. I went here and I dropped the volume entirely for this channel specifically. So now we're going to listen to it with that. As you can tell, when that section is pulled all the way to the bottom, you no longer hear the guitar and the bass together now. All you hear is the main piano melody. So using this technique, you can kind of bring in and uh, put out the guitar and the bass together at whatever section of the song that you want to. Our final technique that we're going to do is called panning. Panning determines where in space the sound is. 
So if you have it pushed all the way to the left in your left headphone, that's where the sound's going to sound. Uh, or if you have it pushed all the way to the right, the sound's going to be in your right headphone. You can also have it in the middle so that it's coming out of both headphones. The thing that we're going to put the panning on is a talking section from the movie When Harry Met Sally. You're saying I'm having sex with these men without my knowledge? No, what I'm saying is they all want to have sex with you. They do not. Do too. They do not. Do too. How do you know? So what we're going to do with the panning is we're going to pan Sally's voice to one side and we're going to pan Harry's voice to the other side. So here's how we do that. The first thing we need is we need a stereo shaper on the sound. So we're going to click here. Uh, here's how you found Stereo Shaper. You're going to go to Select, and then you're going to go to Gain, and there's a Stereo Shaper right here. So what is the Stereo Shaper? Basically, the Stereo Shaper allows you to control the right channel volume and the left channel volume. So you can pull this up and down, right? So this right channel determines how loud it is on the right side. This left channel determines how loud it is on the left side. If this is set to zero, then you basically have no sound across your whole thing. Uh, if this is pushed all the way up, you have lots of sound on your left side. If this is pushed all the way up, you have lots of sound on your right side. So how are we going to use this? We're going to use this by dropping this when Sally's talking and bringing it back up when Harry's talking. And then when Harry is talking, we're dropping this left side and then we're leaving this up high. So that basically means we're going to be hearing it out of our right ear when Harry is talking. And we're going to be hearing it out of our left ear when Sally's talking. So right click on this knob here and you're going to click create automation clip. And you're going to do that for the left one and the right one. So you should see two. One says right channel volume, and one says left channel volume. So for the panning, we're basically taking our left channel volume, or our right channel volume, and we're dropping it for the sections that we don't want that side to be playing. So as an example, when Sally is talking, we have our right channel volume being at the maximum that it's going to be, and our left channel volume is dropped. And then the opposite is true when Harry is talking. So let's play this right now and hear that. As you can tell, here you can just hear Sally talking in your right ear, here you can hear Harry talking in your left ear, and then this part where both the channels are high, you're hearing them both talking in the middle. So let's use this both talking part as a section to try it out. So this part here is when she says, how do you know? How do you know? So we're going to want to have that just coming in our right ear. So to do that, we're going to put a right click here, and we're going to put a right click before it starts, and then we're going to drop this channel volume in the middle. So now we should be hearing it just coming out of our right ear. How do you know? We don't want to pull this volume down too much, or else it sounds kind of weird, and it doesn't sound very fluid switching between. So what we want to do is we want to move it kind of around to 60%. So if you see the top left corner, there's a percentage number, and we're going to move it to around 60%. It doesn't have to be exact, but it has to be pretty close. So now let's listen to it again. How do you know? So that's a little bit smoother, uh, but not perfect. So I'm going to go through and kind of adjust it up a little bit. So just to go over, we've done three automations. We've done one for our frequency slash EQ, right, which is for our intro. We've done one where we drop out the volume in the middle of the track for both our guitar and our bass. And then we've done one where we control the panning of the vocal. So now let's listen to the whole song all together.
Panning determines where. Oh my fucking. Panning determined where. Uh, I can't fucking speak. 